Hi, I'm Randy Hatcher and I'm president of MAU in Augusta, Georgia. But today I really come to you just as Randy Hatcher. And I have an Easter message that I'd like to share with you. And this is a message that I've shared with our employee group, but also I'm hoping that anyone who hears this message that thinks it's something of interest will forward this message on to other people in your family or even around the world. And isn't that the beautiful thing about technology today that you can share things so easily. Well, Easter really is a time of good news. And for me, that good news uh, wasn't always good news. I, I grew up in the Bible Belt, so to speak, here in the Southeast, where if you didn't go to church, you were kind of unusual. So uh, I grew up as a young person and then uh, went to college. And when I went to college, I kind of put all those things aside because my parents weren't around to tell me to go to church. Um, but I remember coming home one time. I live in Augusta, so we're the home of the Masters. And I remember going to the Masters and uh, we were having a good time. We were drinking and partying and I was walking through the woods with a friend of mine cutting down to the beautiful hole number 16. And these two guys stopped us and one of them turned to my friend and he knew him and he said, hey, he said, I haven't seen you in a long time. How you been? And then he asked him a question. He said, uh, Tony, he said, uh, if you died today, would you go to heaven? And I remember him, I mean, I was only 18. I remember him asking that question, and I really wasn't in a, a, a state of mind to really contemplate such deep things. Um, but that question was planted in the back of my mind, and it kind of bothered me. And, but I continued through school, through college, and uh, every now and then I would just ask myself, are you sure? Are you sure you're really a Christian? And uh, so for me, that question wasn't answered until I was 26 years old. So I was already married and I had a, an infant at home. And I met someone who showed me a different way of life. And uh, they were a Christian in a different sort. And when I met this uh, fella who's now uh, my best friend, I um, just saw that he had something that I wanted. And uh, he shared with me that he had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And when he shared that with me, I really didn't even know what that was. What does that mean to have a personal relationship with Jesus? But as I started to look at the, uh, the Bible for the first time, I began to understand a few things, not many. But one night at home on a Friday night, I was going to bed and it was as if I was having this internal conversation with God. And uh, as, as if he was saying to me, Randy, you've known a lot of things all your life about Christianity. You've known a lot of things about Jesus. And at that time, I, I always believed that Jesus died for me. I never questioned that. And yet he said, you've never given me control of your life. I did all of this for you. I'll let my son die for you. But you've never given your life to me for what I did for you. And so that night at the age of 26, I got down next to my bed and, and knelt and said the scariest prayer I've ever said in my life. And I didn't really know what it meant, but all I knew was I was asking God to take control of my life. And uh, the next morning I got up and uh, I could read the Bible. I, I opened it and I have a Bible here. I opened the Bible and I could read it. I've been reading it for a couple of years, but quite frankly, I don't know about you. Uh, a lot of times I would read it and it would be like reading Greek. So all of a sudden I could read the Bible and all of a sudden I had an interest in all of my friends knowing who Jesus was. I never cared about that. Why would I care about that? And so I didn't really know what had happened to me. And, uh, but what I did know was this in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if you allow me to read this, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The only thing I knew for sure is I was a different person. I was changing. My wife saw it. My parents saw it. Everybody saw it. And in 1982, at that time, God changed my life in a very significant way. Um, what I didn't know was what happened that day. And I share this with you because to me this is what Easter is all about. Uh, the disciples and everyone that was close to Jesus had seen him die and they didn't understand it. And yet he told him, he said, wait. He said, you will understand all of this. There will be a time you'll understand it. And in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, <clears throat> But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
And those were words that Jesus spoke to the disciples. And he told them, he said, first you have to receive the Holy Spirit. And what I understood when I read that scripture six months later and someone explained it to me was that night when I got down next to my bed and I asked God to take control of my life, he filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I had never asked him for the Holy Spirit and he just knew that that is what I needed. And he knew that I was willing to give him control of my life. So I say that to you today because maybe today uh, you're in the same boat that I'm in. Uh, maybe you've gone to church all of your life. Maybe you've never gone to church. I don't know. Uh, the most important thing is for all of us, my belief is that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And for all of us, there's the right time. My time was age 26. And I was driving to work this morning and I was sitting at a red light. The red light was completely red and an ambulance drove through the red light. He didn't have his lights on. He was just driving down the road and he drove through the red light going about 40 miles an hour. And I thought, oh my gosh. I said, what if a car had been coming right there? What if it was one of my children? What if it was someone I loved? What if it was you? And the end of time on this earth ended right there. Would you be ready for that? And so today I would share that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, there is a time for all of us to really make a decision with God. And 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. And for you, maybe today is that day. Maybe today is the day that you would say, God, I do need you, and maybe I've played with this relationship all of my life, God, but I want more. I want more to life. So I'd just like to encourage you. Easter, what a wonderful time. It's a time of good news. It's a time to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Make that decision if you never have, or if you think you kind of made the decision, but you're not really sure, make that decision again and say, God, come into my life. Give me your Holy Spirit and make me into the new person that the Bible says. And if I can help you at all and you have any questions, call me, email me, randall.hatcher at mau.com. I'd love to talk to you, 706-823-2363. Call me. I would love to talk to you or I'll talk to anyone you think that I can help in any way. Mainly, thank you for listening, and I do hope you have a great Easter. God bless.